Hello class, welcome to Unit 11, Video 2. Today we're going to go ahead and look at geometric sequences. Yesterday we looked at arithmetic, which was a sequence which you would add the same number or subtract the same number every time. Today we're going to look at geometric sequence, um, which means you would multiply or divide by the same number uh, to get the next term. Okay. So your learning target is that you can find the common ratio and the nth term of any geometric sequence. Okay. I already did a little recap, but a sequence, uh, remember, is a list of terms in a particular order. Um, and yesterday we talked about the Fibonacci sequence. And remember how I said 1 plus 1 gave you 2, 1 plus 2 gave you 3, 2 plus 3 gives you 5. Okay, so that's how that works in order to get the next one. When you have to use more than one term um, that's right before to get this one, so like we use this one and the one before, that's also what we call a recursive sequence. And we'll be looking at those today as well. using the number of terms before to get to the next one, okay? Uh, yesterday we looked at arithmetic, and like I said, you used your common difference, which was the same number to be adding or subtracting every time. And today we're going to go ahead and look at geometric, okay? It's, you find the next term by multiplying the previous term um, by a non-zero constant called the common ratio. So yesterday we had the common difference, which was, which was D, Common ratio today is our R. So to go from here to here, we would times by 2, times by 2, so our common ratio is 2. So let's go ahead and look at example 1. It says find the next three terms of the geometric sequence. Okay, so go, to go from 3 to 21, from 21 to 147. Okay, uh, this would be times 7, but maybe I don't know um, if that's right for the next one. So 21 times 7, I would just go ahead and check. It is. That's correct. Um, one thing I would also recommend is in order to figure out your answer, you can take the term and divide it by the other one. So if I take 21 divided by 3, that would also help me find my common ratio. Some of the problems won't be as easy to find the common ratio for, so you might need to do that. Okay, so this one we would times by 7. If I take 147 times 7, we would get 1,029. If I take 1,029 times 7, I get 7,203. And if I do it uh, one more time, I get 50,421. And that is with a common ratio of 7. Okay, example 2 says, what is the common ratio of the geometric sequence? Okay, I can tell it's going down. If it's going down, it's a fraction or division. Okay, so I would figure out R. The way you can do it is taking the second term divided by the first term, which gives you 1 half. So the common ratio for this one is 1 half. And you could just try it. 6 times 1 half is 3. 3 times 1 half is 3 over 2. Okay, that is example 2. Yesterday we looked at arithmetic, and to find any term, you, you, we had an equation that we used, which I showed you was actually a linear equation. Today we're going to go ahead and look at geometric. They also have an equation that you can memorize, or there is another equation that we've worked with that is very similar to the equation for a geometric sequence. Okay, so here is our formula. It's a sub n is equal to a sub 1, so our first term and then times our ratio, or common ratio, times n minus 1, okay? So let's just maybe do a little changing of this. I can actually change this to be an exponential function that you know. I'm missing an e here. Exponential. All right, there we go, function. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. All right, so if I take this, I would have a sub n is equal to a sub 1. And then I can actually, remember when you multiply or divide, you can use addition and subtraction. So I can rewrite this as r to the nth times r to the negative 1. If I have a negative exponent, I can rewrite it in the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. So I have a sub n is equal to, and I'm going to rewrite it over just this piece here. Okay, so if I have this, then I would say, well, if I take my first term and divide it by my ratio, okay, for instance, if I have the sequence 8, 16, 32, and 32, and on, my ratio would equal 2. 
All right, if I took eight and divided it by two, I would get back to my a sub zero term, which would be four. So if I take it and divide it by my ratio, this piece gives me my a sub zero term, okay? Which gives me a sub n is equal to a sub zero times r to the nth power, okay? Which is very similar to our last unit, um, exponential functions, y equals a b to the x. So remember, this right here is our y-intercept or our initial value. So you can just use the exponential equation from last trimester, um, or you can use the equation for geometric sequences, okay? Whichever one is easiest for you, but you will have to have that down for your quiz. All right, so example three says find the eighth term of the geometric sequence for which a sub one is negative three and r is equal to negative two. Okay, so let's just go ahead and use our exponential, y equals a b to the x. This is our a to the zero, and this is our nth. Okay, we're trying to find the eighth term, so this will actually be eight. This is our n, and like I said, our n is equal to eight. So let's figure out our a sub zero term. Okay, what this means is you're multiplying by negative 2 every time. So if I'm multiplying by negative 2, I would just go ahead to find a sub 0 and take my initial and divide it by negative 2. The negatives will cancel, and so I'm left with 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So a, point, a sub 0 is 1.5. So my equation is y equals 1.5 times our common ratio, negative 2, to the nth. And like I said, we want to do this for the, nth, the eighth term. And in order to type this one in, oh, I hit the wrong button. That's okay. All right. I want 1.5 times, make sure you put the negative in parentheses, negative 2 and the parentheses to the eighth. If you don't do that, it won't get the, it won't take negative two times negative two eight times. And you get an answer of 384. So our eighth term would be the number 384. So I use y equals, really correct notation would be a sub eight. The eighth term is 384. Okay, that is example three. Let's go ahead and look at example four. It says write an equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence. All right, so to go from here to here, three times 12, maybe you don't know how to get there. So if you needed to find your ratio, you would just take 12 divided by three, which is four. 12 times four is 48, that's correct. Okay, so my ratio is four. Now let's find our a sub zero term. We had three, so we would take three, and instead of timesing by four, I would divide by four. So it is 0.75 or three over four. So to write an equation, it would just be y equals my a sub zero, 3 over 4, times my ratio to the nth. And like I said, I always like to write y, but I really should write a sub n to keep it in the proper sequence notation, okay? That is example 4. Example 5 says, find a sub 9 if a sub 4 is equal to 16 and r equals 4. All right, so let's just go ahead and figure this out. Let's write an equation. Okay, can I write an equation? Hmm, I don't know my a sub zero, but I know everything else. This means that when I have an n equal to four, I get an a sub n is equal to 16. So if we have a sub n is equal to a sub zero times our ratio to the nth, I can plug everything in and solve for my initial term. So a sub n is 16 equals, we don't know our initial, but we know our ratio is four to the fourth, okay? Four to the fourth is 256, a sub zero. So I would divide both sides by 256. And I get that my a sub zero term is 16 divided by 256 is, we reduce this to one over 16. Okay, so my a sub zero is one over 16. So my equation will be a sub n is equal to one over 16 times four to the nth. And now we're asked to find a sub 9. a sub 9 is equal to 1 over 16 times 4 to the 9th. So a sub 9, if I type this in, I have 1 divided by 16 
times. In this one, since 4 is positive, you don't need to put it in parentheses. But if you want to make just get in the habit, go ahead. And you get 16,384. So a sub 9 is 16,384. Whoops. There is my answer for example 5. Okay, example 6. A family of mice have found a 50-pound sack of grain. Okay, they have found a 50-pound sack of grain. So that's how much we start with is 50. So I'm going to say that's my A sub 0. Okay, one-fifth of the weight in grain is disappearing every week. How much will be left after three weeks? Okay, well, if one-fifth disappears, how much is left? Four-fifths is left. Okay, so if that's what's happening every week, what do we have left is four-fifths, so that's my R. My R is equal to four-fifths. All right, so my equation would be A sub N is equal to 50 times my ratio, 4 over 5, to the nth. We want to find after three weeks, so I'd plug in 3 for N. So we'd have 4 over 5 to the nth. Okay, this one is a fraction, so you're going to want to make sure you use parentheses. So we would have 50 times 4 divided by 5, end the parentheses, and then go to the third power, which I didn't write on the thing, but to the third. And so we would have 26.5 is our answer. And I'm just going to write this out. I should have wrote a 3 here. So A sub 3 is equal to 25.6, and this is in pounds? Yes, pounds. So we have 25.6 pounds left after the, the mice have snacked on it for three weeks. All right, example seven. Each year, Mrs. Meyer's uh, teaching retirement increases by 15%. If she has $27,000 in retirement now, how much will she have in an account after seven years? Well, this one is actually very similar to what we did last uh, unit. If it increases by 15%, it's really 0.15, and to get my rate, I would take 1 plus 1.5, which gives me 1.15. So my A sub N is equal to 27,000 times 1.15 to the nth. Well, I want to know when N is equal to 7. So A sub 7 is equal to 27,000 times 1.15 to the 7th. All right, if I type that in, remember this is money. So we round money to two decimals. I get 71,000. 820 and 54 cents. That's how much will be in my retirement after seven years. All right. So that's kind of our, our wrap on geometric sequences. If you have any questions on it, let me know. Um, otherwise, we're going to move into recursive. Okay. So recursive. Each term is generated from one or more previous terms. Okay. So the Fibonacci sequence is 1, 1. So 1 plus 1 gives you 2. 1 plus 2 gives you 3. 2 plus 3 gives you 5, okay? So the way a Fibonacci sequence would be listed is I would tell you, well, a sub 1 is equal to 1, and a sub 2 is equal to 1. There's no other way to do it. And what you would do is you would have our equation would be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1, okay? Plus a sub n minus 2. If I take n minus 1, if I'm asking you for the third term, n minus 1 would be the second term. n minus 2 would be the first term. So this is your previous term. And a sub n minus 2 would be two previous terms. Okay. So example 8 says find the first five terms of the sequence in which a sub 1 is equal to 4, and then a sub n is equal to 3 times a sub n minus 1 minus 2. All right, so let's just write this out. a sub 2 is going to equal 3 times a sub, what is 2 minus 1? Okay, so it's sub 2 minus 1 minus 2, which gives you 3 times a sub 1 minus 2 equals 3 times, what is a sub 1? It is 4 minus 2. So 3 times 4 is 12, 12 minus 2 is 10. So my answer is 10. All right, moving on to a sub 3. Once you get the hang of this, you won't have to write it all out, but we would have 3 times a sub n minus 1, so 3 minus 1 then minus 2 equals 3 times a sub 2 minus 2. 
Okay, what is a sub 2? Now it's 10. So it's 3 times 10 minus 2, which is 30 minus 2, so 28. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking 3 times the term before it and subtracting 2 every time. So a sub 4 then, 3 times a sub 4 minus 1 minus 2 equals 3 times a sub 3 minus 2. 3 times what's my a sub 3rd term? It is 28 minus 2. If we plug this in, you get 82. All right, and the last one, a sub 5 equals 3 times a sub 5 minus 1 minus 2. So minus 1. So it's 3 times a sub uh, 4 minus 2. 3 times a sub 4, which is 82, minus 2 equals 244. All right, that is example 8. Okay. Um, example 9 is another recursive. And it looks like it's mislabeled a bit. Yep, so this one's 9. Okay. Find the first five terms of the sequence in which a sub 1 is negative 3, and then we find a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus n. All right, so let's fill this one out. We have a sub 2 is equal to a sub 2 minus 1 plus what's n? n is 2. So it's really our a sub 1 plus 2. Okay, well, a sub 1 is negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. Now, a sub 3 equals a sub 3 minus 1 plus our n, which in this case is 3. So this one's got a little more moving parts, things that are changing. So we have a sub 2 plus 3. Our a sub 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. a sub 4 is equal to a sub 4 minus 1, plus our n value, which is 4 in this case. So we have a sub 3 plus 4. a sub 3 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. And our last one, a sub 5 equals a sub 5 minus 1 plus our n, which is 5. So we have a sub 4 plus 5. a sub 4 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. All right, that is it for uh, recursive sequences and geometric. If you have any questions about either of them, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day, and I will talk to you later.